Hello, I am Designer Dave, and I wanted to talk to you about monetization number two. I did a video number one, which uh, talked about ethical versus exploitative monetization. Today, I had a uh, kind of an argument with someone about microtransactions and how they relate to collectible card games, CCGs. So, in the game of the recently released Gwent, you can see that there's uh, some trouble with how they're doing the progression, and you get cards very slowly, and this is primarily because they seem to have a lot less cards than games like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering. Now, that isn't to say Gwent is bad, but something that came up in my conversation was that, hey, Gwent is pay to win. Well, the fact of the matter is, all CCGs are pay to win. You pay money to purchase cards, the more cards you have, the more depth of those cards, the better you can construct a deck, and the more likely you are to win against an opponent. And it's very, very obvious in Gwent, where you can literally have uh, a person who has cards that are power level 7 versus a guy who has all power level 9, or 10, or even 11 uh, cards, they're going to win. Uh, the same is true of Yu-Gi-Oh, where uh, someone can just in general have 1800 base cards that they can put down on turn one and the other guy will have lesser cards the guy with the bigger cards is going to win. And that's just inherent to the way that these CCGs work. And the dreaded word microtransactions came up. And the, the problem that people seem to have with microtransactions is that they feel like they're constantly getting money pulled away from them for a singular game. They don't associate the components that they are purchasing with the value of the money that they are giving for them. That is to say, when you play a game like Skyrim, for example, and they want to charge you 99 cents for horse armor, people get upset because um, they feel like that horse armor is inconsequential and shouldn't be there, but the fact of the matter is in those games you don't have to make that purchase, so it is ethical monetization in those cases. Here's the problem with CCGs in general, and this goes back to Magic the Gathering and its entire model of monetization. They are A, pay to win, which is exploitative, and they are B, entirely microtransaction oriented, and they are not microtransaction oriented in terms of your purchasing skins and things like that, they are microtransaction oriented in terms of your purchasing power in every single pack, or at least the potential for more power. That makes them pay to win, that makes them pay to play, and these are the two most hated monetization models uh, that I've I've seen in the industry, but for some reason people are okay with it with collectible card games, for the most part. But I'm seeing a shift in away from these sort of models uh, in Hearthstone. So in Hearthstone you can earn gold by completing quests, and then use the gold from those quests to play in the arena, which is sort of equal footing in that you're, you and all your opponents are drawing from sets of cards, you pick out the best card, and you build a deck based on that. So it's a random element, but it is definitely more fair than the very pay-to-win constructed version of the game. Now, you can't do that in Gwent, and you can't do that in Magic the Gathering. Not yet. Magic the Gathering is coming out with a new version of the game that I think is going to take a lot of inspiration from what Hearthstone has done, um, and I th I'm hoping that they will monetize it correctly, ethically. Um, there's no guarantee of that. Gwent, on the other hand, is not ethically monetized. Um, if you pay in, you get better cards, you will stomp everyone, the game's much more interesting and fun, and less grindy. My biggest issue with the game is that currently, when you play it, it's a real grind to get any cards. The number of packs you get is too far and few between, and as a result, if you don't get lucky draws from those packs, which it seems to be very unlikely to get really good cards, though I did get an Ignis on my very first uh, barrel open. Um, but overall it seems to be quite stingy with how it hands out the cards, and as a result uh, you end up in situations where the other person clearly paid in money and you're going to get stomped and there's really nothing you can do about it. And it's very apparent because there's not a lot of RNG in Gwent, which says a lot for how it could be more fun in constructed play and for uh, players like Kriparian, but it also makes the game uh, less fun for people who are not numbers oriented necessarily. So we'll see how CD Projekt Red decides to deal with this, or if they decide to deal with it, but Gwent has some issues in its progression and it really needs to get a uh, draft tournament style version of, of the game that you can play with relatively low cost amounts of um, their in-game currency. And then I think the game will be significantly better. Until they make that fix, I don't recommend the game. I, I mean, I do recommend playing it uh, 
up to a certain point, but as soon as it starts to feel grindy, know that that grinding feeling is only going to get worse unless you pay in money, and that's done on purpose, and it's part of the reason that the, the game is more exploitative than, say, Hearthstone, which has a lot of leeway where you can earn gold through the quests and uh, use that gold to play in the arena where you can have a fun experience that's on more equal footing. To summarize, CCGs are pay-to-win games that are also pay-to-play in many instances, and they are almost entirely monetized by microtransactions. Hearthstone is more ethical than most, but it still is a microtransaction-oriented pay-to-win environment, so if you hate microtransactions and pay-to-win, just keep that in mind whenever you play a CCG. And that's all I really have to say about that. Now, if you stuck around, <clears throat> that's because I have one more thing to say, and that's uh, I'm now in the position where I might have to take a full-time job again in order to make ends meet. Um, in terms of seeing more of this content, if that's something that you would like, please consider going to Patreon and supporting me. Even $1 a month goes a really long way and uh, helps me feel like I'm not uh, a complete failure at life, which uh, sometimes I do feel that way. Uh, and I'll do a whole video on depression <laughs> and game development if you like. Just leave a note in the comments below and I'll do that one. But no, we have more important topics that I want to get to, such as what it's like to work at companies like Blizzard, Ubisoft, EA, how, what it's like to work with startups, uh, what it's like to be a consultant, um, the game dev perspective on game balance and fixing bugs, like all of these are important topics that I want to get to, but I have to uh, do some work to make ends meet. And the less time I can devote to consulting, the more time I can devote to making these videos and getting this information out to you. So please like and subscribe and hit the little bell notification if you want to know whenever a new video comes up. Patreon, consider it. All right, that's all I got to say. Designer Dave out.